In the previous video, you learned about what Modbus communication protocol is and the types of Modbus communication used in the industry. Now, as promised in this video, you're going to learn about how Modbus communication protocol works between devices. Let's get into it. Before we get into today's video, if you love our videos, be sure to click the like button below and make sure to click subscribe and the bell to receive notifications of new RealPars videos. This way, you never miss another one. Each Modbus message has the same structure. Four basic elements are present in each message. The sequence and order of these elements are the same for all messages. This allows for easy parsing of the content of the Modbus message. A conversation is always started by a master in the Modbus network. A Modbus master sends a message, and depending on the contents of the message, the slave interprets the message and responds to it. Physical slave addressing in the message header is used to define which slave device should respond to a message. All other nodes on the Modbus network ignore the message if the address field doesn't match their own address. Modbus functions perform, read, and write instructions to the slave's internal memory registers to configure, monitor, and control the slave's inputs and outputs. Modbus devices will typically include a register map outlining where the configuration, input, and output data can be written and read from. You should always refer to the slave's register map of your device to gain a better understanding of its overall operation. The Modbus data model has a simple structure described in four basic data types. Discrete inputs, coils outputs, input registers, or input data, and holding registers, or output data. The service request area of the message, or Modbus protocol data unit, or PDU, is comprised of a function code and a number of data bytes requested by the master. The Modbus memory registers of a device are organized around the four basic data reference types, and this data type is further identified by the leading number used in the device's memory address, such as a zero-based register referencing a message to read or write discrete outputs or coils, or a one-based register referencing reading discrete inputs, or a three-based register referencing reading input registers, and a four-based register referencing reading or writing to output or holding registers. The function code field specifies which register data group it reads or writes to and from the slave. For example, a function code 03 read holding registers 40,001 to 40,002 is addressed as a data register 0000 in the data address field of the message sent to the slave. The function code 03 works on this holding register type in the slave's data map because the request specifies using a holding register data type operation, and this type of addressing in the request is implied. The fields in the PDU are broken down into bytes and grouped by the field name. The request message contains function code of 03, the starting address high and low bytes of address 0000, and the count number of addresses to read from the slave, register high and low bytes of count value 0002, specifies the starting register and quantity of registers to be read from the slave. Example of a request to read the first two registers in the holding register area, 0 to 1, register 40,001 to 40,002, and therefore, as another example, the holding register 40,108 is actually addressed as register 107 in the message data area of the PDU. Many of the data types are named from its use in driving relays, for example, a single-bit physical output is called a coil, and a single-bit physical input 
is called a discrete input or a contact. The function code field of the message will contain one byte that tells the slave what kind of action to take. Valid function codes range from 1 to 255, but not all codes will apply to a particular slave. This table highlights a subset of standard Modbus functions. In addition, the Master Request Data field provides the slave with any additional information required by the slave to complete the action specified by the function code in the master's request, typically including the slave map register address, the number of registers to provide in the request, and any write data from the master. The slave's normal response simply echoes the original function code of the request, but the slave's error response returns a code that is equivalent to the original function code with the most significant bit set to logic 1. For example, the read holding registers command has the function code with one byte containing 8 bits is binary 00000011. If the slave device accepts the request without error, it will return the same code in its response. However, if an error occurs, the slave will return one byte containing eight binary bits, 1000000011, in the function code field, and appends a unique code in the data field of the response message that tells the master device what kind of error occurred, or the reason for the error. This function code, 01, read coils code, is used to read from 1 to 2,000 contiguous registers for the status of coils in a slave device. The request PDU specifies the starting address of the slave's memory address of the first coil and the number of coils to read from the slave device. The function code 02, read discrete inputs code, is used to read from 1 to 2,000 contiguous status of discrete inputs in a remote slave. The request PDU specifies the starting address of the slave's memory address of the first input and the number of coils to read from the slave device. The function code 03, read holding registers code, is used to read the contents of a contiguous block of holding registers in a remote slave. The request PDU specifies the starting register address and the number of registers to read from the slave device. The function code 04, read input registers code, is used to read from 1 to 125 contiguous input registers in a remote device. The request PDU specifies the starting register address and the number of registers. The function code 05, write single coil code, is used to write a single output to either on or off in a remote slave device. The function code 06, write single register code, is used to write a single holding register in a remote slave device. The request PDU specifies the address of the slave memory register address to be written to. The function code 15, write multiple coils code, is used to force each coil in a sequence of coils to either on or off in a remote slave device. The request PDU specifies the coil's memory address to be forced on or off. And the function code 16, write multiple registers, is used to write a block of contiguous registers, 1 to 123 registers, in a remote slave device. While these Modbus function codes represent the most common read and write functions, it would be helpful for you to review the Modbus specification for additional information. For additional detailed Modbus protocol technical information, please refer to the modbus.org website. Communication with slave devices or master PLCs or computers can be accomplished with Modbus simulator software to run on your personal computer. The connection can be either serial or Ethernet and in the form of a master or slave. The software will allow you to perform all of the Modbus protocol communication function code to simply read or write to an existing slave. 
You can set up one PC to run the slave simulation software and another to run the master simulation software. Connecting to a slave is first performed by setting the communication parameters for your serial COM port and then by entering the slave's address in the device ID field. For example, 1. Selecting the function code 01 to read the slave's coil status starting at address 0001 and reading a length of 100 coils. In addition, there are several companies providing products and support to help you with protocol communication. ProSoft Technologies, HMS Industrial Communication, and MOXA are to name just a few. This concludes the video, Modbus Communication Protocol. I hope you've learned what's required to move forward in creating your own motion control project. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. This video is one of a series of videos on motor and motion control, so please check back with us soon for more motion control topics. Want to learn PLC programming in an easy to understand format and take your career to the next level? Head on over to realpars.com.